And many of the critics of Islam, they quote the famous verse of the Quran of Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 5, which says, wherever you find a kafir, you kill him. And Arun Shuri in his book, The World of Fatwas, quotes the same verse. And he gives the reference. Quran says in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 5, wherever you find the kafir, into bracket, he says Hindu, you kill him. And when you open the Quran, Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 5, when you read the translation, the Quran does say, wherever you find the unbeliever, kafir, kill him. But it is out of context. To understand the context, you start from verse number 1 of Surah Tawbah, chapter 9. There was a peace treaty between the Muslims and the Mushriks of Makkah. This peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the Mushriks of Makkah. By the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number 5, He is giving an ultimatum to the Mushriks of Makkah. Put things straight in four months' time, otherwise a declaration of war. And in the battlefield, when the enemy come, when they come to kill you, when they come to attack you, in the battlefield, when the unbelievers come, then kill them. Don't get scared. Kill them. And wait for them in every stratagem of war. This is a verse of the Quran talking about the battlefield. When the enemies break the contract and when they come in the battlefield to fight you, don't get scared, fight them back. And this is normal, any army general, to boost the morale of his soldiers, he will not say run away. He will say when the enemies come, you fight them. That is what the Quran says. It is a verse in the battlefield. It's taken out of context. And Arun Shuri, after quoting verse number 5, he jumps to verse number 7. You know why? Verse number 6 has the answer to his sickness. Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 6 says, If the unbelievers, if the enemies, if the kafir, if they want peace, if they want asylum, don't just give it to them, escort them to a place of security. If the enemy, if the unbelievers, if they want asylum, if they want peace, don't just give it to them, escort them to a place of security so that they may hear the word of Allah. Today, which army general will say this? Maximum will tell his soldiers, if the enemy want peace, let them go. The Quran says, don't let them go. Escort them to a place of security. <laughs> and almost all the verses of the Quran, whenever it talks about fighting in the battlefield, the next verse says, peace is better. Whichever verse you pick up of the Quran, when it talks about fighting in the battlefield against the enemy, immediately next verse says, peace is better. Even this verse says, if the enemy want peace, give it to them. And the Quran is very explicit. The verse which was cited by the Qari in the beginning of the program, Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 32 says that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any human being, it is as though he has saved the whole nation. Here the Quran says, if any human being kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, any human being kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for corruption, for spreading corruption, or for murder, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. This verse of the Quran alone is sufficient to prove that Islam is against killing of any innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim. There is no other scripture in the world which says this, that if you kill one human being, you have killed the whole of humanity. And if you save one human being, you have saved the whole of humanity. We were taught beautiful things by this man. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He taught us to love and to 